not ready. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over the controls right now. Hello. Right. Hi, we can hear you. Hey. Wonderful. Let's get the screen going. Let me know if you can see the red and the Yes, we can see it. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me today, everybody. How's everybody doing? First uh, Monday here, start to the week. Happy Halloween early. Glad to be here. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk to you about a great topic. It's gaps. And specifically, we're going to talk about institutional money and gaps. And before we get into the, the strategy itself, which is gaps, I want to let everybody know I can, I can go through the questions here uh, as we're going through. Let me just pop it out. I just press it down to expand it. There. Okay. Does it for day trading? Is that my question? Yes, you can use this for day trading. You can use this for day trading. 20k a month. It's twenty thousand dollars a month. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't put out the whole thing here. We'll we'll go through it. <laughs> so if you're interested, you can also watch me here on Fox. I'll be on Fox Thursday morning at 5 40 a.m. Uh, this week on November second. Didn't ha don't have my topic yet, but Apple reports Thursday night. And if you're interested in more information. You can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. So let's just get right into it. We're going to talk about making money today and we're going to talk about gaps. It's really about chunking it out. Whatever your goals are when you want to trade, everyone wants to make money. The idea is to be profitable. Whether you want to make 10 grand a month or 20 grand a month, what, whatever your goals are, okay? First of all, you have to know your goals. And second of all, you have to take it day by day. I think, it, I think people get overwhelmed when they're trading where they 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 think oh my gosh this is just too much it's too much to think about and and that's why the idea of breaking it down to day by day is easier for people to to grasp it's easier pe for people to juggle so i think in order to do that how how can you break it down so you stick with it you follow the system whatever system you're going to do and today we're going to talk about my system which is gaps but you got to follow the system one system and you don't deviate from it you don't deviate whether it's different market conditions, whether the market's bullish, whether the market's bearish. I like to focus on shorts. That was the play today. It was Merck short, MRK, which we will review today's, today's play. It was a short. But you follow it no matter what. And if you believe in your system and have conviction in your system, then, then you will follow it. It's interesting because I just well, I was listening to the last speaker talk about emotions and trading, I found that personally, and, and, and I'm gonna just say this here before I get into what, uh, what we're gonna talk about today, that you need to have an edge when you trade, no matter, again, what your goals are, because you have to go into the market with the attitude that you're gonna win, otherwise you're working against yourself. And a lot of people do get wrapped up into their emotions. They, they're overcome almost with their emotions sometimes with fear and panic of what to do and the stress of also making quick decisions. Now, when I'm trading, I make very fast decisions in the market, sometimes within seconds, okay? Sometimes I'm in a trade and I'm out in minutes, which was today's, which we're gonna, which we're gonna go over here, which was the Merck trade. But ultimately, I use my emotions. One of my, my things that I do, and one of the reasons, if, you know, if you wanna come and learn from me and be in my trading room, is one, one of the benefits of being with me is that I use my emotions to give me an edge because I want to win, okay? So that, that emotion, that desire of wanting to win and wanting to make the money, okay, is what I use to help me be successful. And so I, I think it, it, it sounds idealistic to, to say, well, you're not going to use any emotions at all. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna not have any emotions. You're going to be emotionless. But the fact is that you can use emotions to your advantage. And I also think that it's impossible to not have any emotions because you're a human being. I'm a human being. You're a human being. So if you know that you are, accept the fact that you have emotions. And the best thing that you can do for yourself is recognize that you want to win. Okay, which I do. So I'm going to go through here the trading results for the entire month of October. Now, tomorrow is the last day of the month. I don't know what we're going to get tomorrow. It's earnings season. We'll have a lot of things. I want to show you all the profits and losses from the last month of trading to give you an idea here what you can make. And then we're going to go and talk about the system. So you can go back and go over this because I know this is also being recorded. 
So 10-2 was on TV, was a day off. 10-3 was a winner, TTS, $1,500 profit. 10-4 was Tiva, that was a winner. 10-5, no trades. 10-6 was cost, that was a good one, $1,100 profit. So the weekly total for the first week of October was 5,600. Average total in this week of the day, which again varies, 1867. But there was two days in that week that I didn't trade. 10-9, cost was a winner. 10-10, Dow was a winner. And, and even, see, some days you'll make more than 1,000. Again, today's webinar we're talking about making 20 grand a month, which is an average of 1,000 bucks a day. But some days you'll make way more. Some days you make a little bit less. Some days you won't trade, okay? So again, you chunk it out. 10-11 was a loser and a winner. 10-12 was a loser and a winner. 10-13 was a TV day off. Weekly total that week, 65.25. Average that week per day, 1631. And just so you know, in case anybody asks, in order to hit these marks or to make $1,000 a day, you need to be looking at that as an average to risk per trade, which I consider an advanced risk. And that doesn't mean that you have to risk that. Obviously, if you wanted to achieve these results, if you risked half of that, you could figure half the profit, but that still would be very profitable weeks. 1016 with SPY was a loser. Apple was a winner. 1017 Hog was a loser. NWY was a winner. 1018 Spy was a loser. IBM, that was a really good winner. It was a good gap, 3,400 on that day. 1019 was Apple. That was a nice gap. It was a short. 1020 G was a loser, and CLG was a winner on 1020. That, that was a big week. Weekly total of that week was 11,205. So you see here, if, if your goal is to make 20 grand a month and you can make more than half that in even one week, it's totally, totally doable. You chunk it out when you look at your goals. So if your goal is to make $20,000 a month, you might make half of that in one week. You get up every morning and you prepare yourself to trade. And like I said a little bit ago, you go into the market wanting to win. 1023, Matt was a winner. This was last week, 1250. 1024, G was a loser. Logi was a loser. Matt was break even. That was a tough day on the Tuesday. Flipped it around though, 1025, Juniper was a loser, AMD was a big winner, 1026, CLG was one loser and one big winner, and Friday was on TV was off. So last week, total of 93.50, and then today was Merck, $900 profit. So if you had been in the trading room with me in the last month and risked an advance risk, you could have made over $33,000, which is obviously way more than 20 grand a month. I thought a long time about increasing my risk, I might, but not until 2018. But either way, I want people to know that it is possible to make money in the market. But you have to have a good system, you have to have a good attitude, you have to be focused. And one of the other really important things I do is I don't trade all day. I don't trade all day, like I'm done. 12, you know, 12.22 here, I'm done. I'm doing the webinar with you people. But you know, I could go do something after this. My day is done. One of the very nice things about trading gaps, which is my strategy, which we're gonna start talking about right now, is that you don't have to sit at a computer all day. I find that people that trade every day till four o'clock that are day traders get, get hurt. They get hurt in the afternoon. And, and unless you have a day like Friday, which I'll just briefly talk about. Friday was a power trend day in the market. And if you were in good stuff on Friday, you could have gone long so many beautiful bullish gaps in the market and made money pretty much into the close. But it's rare that the market power trends and it's rare you get stocks doing that all day, although Friday was an anomaly and you could have done that all day on Friday. Anyways, the average, average for October this past month that you could have made results in these trades was 1975. And there were some days in there I was on television, I didn't trade. And there was a day then there was nothing that met my criteria. So there's nothing like results to help people see that they can do it. And I think that's the most important thing because everything that you do has to be results driven. Although trading is fun, it's really, really fun. I love to do it. I love to read charts. The idea is that you have to make money. Otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense to do it at all. So if you're trying to make 20 grand a month trading, you have to look at it in the big picture by chunking it out, by taking it day by day. There's no rush. You don't have to go crazy and get every trade to the dream target, for example, the first week of the month. And the other thing I realize for people that they think too is that a lot of times people, if they've gone through a bad spell of trading or a dry spell in trading, they, they, they have in their head like that they're rushed to make all the money that the losses they've ever had since they've started trading or, or in bad systems back really, really quickly. 
Like people, people feel overwhelmed by that. First of all, that doesn't make any sense. It's, it's totally not realistic. You've got to start fresh. Like if you come to me and you want to learn my system and method, you got to start like today's day one. You're brand new. You're going into it. You're going to follow the rules, follow the system and do it. Okay. And you're going to have a brand new attitude about the market as well. So it's very important to use a system to trade. And it's very important to learn it first. Why? Because you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to make any fat fingery things. Okay. And you want to have a good attitude and keep that attitude up and be successful. Like one of the days, it was last week, I guess, I think it was the Tuesday last week, what was not a good day when you simply just don't make any money. That's rare, but it does happen. But you got to get up in the next morning and just do the same thing that you know and follow the same system that you know and do it. And you got to have a good attitude. And that's what, what a lot of people have a hard time with too because what they want to do is skip around and they want to do a different thing, a different strategy, a different system. They want to change the rules and then they never see the consistency. One of the reasons I credit myself for my own success is that I have stuck with trading nothing but my system. Ever since I started out trading now, it's been nine years, all right? You stick to the program, focus on one thing. And whether you learn my system and choose to come and do my course or somebody else's, I still think it's important to stick to one thing. Because how do you even know that the thing that you're doing, the system or strategy you're doing, it even works if you're doing all kinds of other things, if you're jumping around, okay? The idea is to stick with it. All right, let's get back into the, the webinar here. Any, any questions that you can write it in and let me know. I see Gannon there laughing. <laughs> Anyways, the key to profits is capturing the momentum move. Now, what do I mean? I mean, if a stock is rallying, and I'm going to talk here about Amazon because Amazon rallied on Friday, had a big, big day from the earnings up from Thursday night. If a stock is rallying, if the price is moving higher, you want to buy into the momentum, okay? So you're getting it into the push up. And again, I'm going to talk about Amazon. So the idea to making money is, is you're getting it into the momentum. Now, what makes momentum? Institutions. So momentum comes from big money moving a stock in one direction, whether it's up or down. Now, in the case like of Merck today and also Friday, Merck fell too, you would have shorted selling action that happened in MRK. The momentum was down. So you're shorting into the selling. So you make money in stocks by going with the momentum, not against it. You go with it. You capture it into it, into it, whether it's up or down. And what makes momentum in stocks? Institutional money, hedge funds, banks, big positions in the market, big professional traders. Um, let me just see here who else is ready. Oh, you think I'm yelling? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm used to projecting from being on television. I'll be more quiet. <laughs> sorry about that, Bill. Um, hold on. Let me just go back here. Uh, da, 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 da. Pat is saying account size to make the profits, uh, to make the profits of the, in October, your risk has to be a minimum of a thousand dollars, but the risk in those trades was anywhere between a thousand and 1500 from the October results that I just showed you. So some trades were a thousand, some trades were 1200. When I'm looking to get in something really quickly, I'm not, I'm not being penny by penny specific. So in other words, if sometimes something's 80 cents, I'll take 2,000 shares, it might be 1,600. Do you follow me? So to give you an average, it's between 1,000 and 1,500. As far as your account size, it depends what broker you go to. What broker you go to depends on the amount of leverage and buying power and margin they're gonna give you. If you go to a retail account, they're gonna give you four to one, you have to put up 25 grand and your average buying power is gonna be what? 100 grand as a day trader, actively in and out. If you go to a prop firm, some give you 10 to one, some give you 20 to one. So in other words, if you go to a prop firm and you put up 10,000 and the margin is 10 to one, your buying power would be 100 grand. And some places, like I said, will give you 20. So bottom line is you have to check with the broker as far as your buying power. But the stocks, if you go back and look at those, those trades varied in price. I mean, October was a month again, it's earnings season where some of those stocks were expensive. Apple isn't cheap. Uh, Costco, IBM, I mean, there were some in there that were over the $100 price point. But on average, I would say most of the setups and stocks we're looking to do in the room are between $20 and maybe $65. It's not like we're doing very expensive things every single solitary week. And even when we are, the stops are larger. So really, a stop in something like IBM might be a buck. 
So if you're risking a thousand dollars, you know, you can only take a thousand shares anyways. So I would say if you want to make profits like that, you have to have over 100K in buying power, uh, between 100K and 200K BP, if you want to risk that much and make that much included in the stock prices that were high there, to give you an idea. But as far as the margin requirements, you got to check with each broker. I'm not a broker. Everyone understands that. I'm an educational firm, The Stocks, which teaches people how to make money in the market using a system. You've got to find your own broker. You can trade anywhere that you can actively day trade as long as you can get charts. And you're going to have the right shorts. Okay? Any questions? Um, yes, you can do options, but actively it's day trades only, Caesar is asking. Uh, the options are not something that I look to do every day. The, the day trades, yes. Options are, I called an option in Amazon, which we're going to talk about here. But, but I don't think that the, for, the, for the in and out quickly, which we're going to talk about like today in MRK, could you have done MRK as a put today? Yes. But it, would, it was so much easier to do as a day trade. So not every trade makes sense to do as an option. A lot of them do, but it's easier sometimes just to do them as equity trades. Could you do them as option trades? Yes, but you'd almost have to get in the trade, throw the order out, put it in between the bid and the ask, and then quick it out. So, because today, I mean, literally, it was like, boom, it went immediately. So you'd have to be really quick, some of the moves. I think it's easier to do them as equity trades, but a lot of them that are like the Amazon from Friday, now that, that was a good option trade. And we are going to go over that one. Uh, let me just go back here. Yes, I give exact picks. Exact picks every day. Those ones we just went over. Those ones I just went over in the October results. Okay, so how do I find momentum to trade in gaps? In gaps. Okay, so what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different from the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So guess what? Does every stock gap? No. Is every gap playable in the direction of the gap? No. Does every gap have momentum even at all? No. Okay. So it's about finding the good ones, qualifying the gaps. Now let's just go over this one here. This was a good one too. CELG was a short. It was a short twice actually in the last month. Now, I'm going to explain here on a chart. This is a daily chart of CELG what a gap is. Stock closed up here the night before. This was last week around 119-ish. Boom. Open in the morning the next day here around 98 something. So I, this is a gap down. Stock closed at one price at 4 o'clock. And at 930 when the U.S. market opened, it opened at a way different price. It also had one back here. Previously, all the way up here was around 135. And then this day in the morning, it opened at 9.30, around 124 something. So this was a gap and this is a gap and they're both gap downs. So that's all that a gap is, except for you have to figure out what are you gonna do with this one? So what do I do? My niche is that I predict in the morning before 9.30 that CLG is a short here and here, which is exactly what I did and it worked. So you're predicting, is this a long or is this a short in the gap on the day? Where's the momentum gonna take this thing? Where's it gonna go? So that's what you wanna do. After it's already happened, it's not that you can't take a late trade, you can. I don't like to do that. Again, I like to get in and out in the morning quick. And there are days though, like I said, like Friday, which you could play all day, but that's not all the time. But you're playing the selling action in the shorts, for example. So for example, this is a one minute chart. This closed up here the night before. Gap down here, this was the one last week in the CELG, stock dropped. You could have played this action in here. Actually, this was the one that was a loss for me because I didn't get out. This actually was a profitable trade. I, I, I Unfortunately, it was a loss because I didn't get out. Some people in the room did get out. But actually, to be honest with you, both trades worked. I just didn't get the exit out. This bounced so quickly, I didn't get out of it. And I thought it was going to go here. I did a second trade in it, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But anyways, you want to get the selling action. So this just went so quickly. Here was the one that was the better one here, which was the secondary move. Stock dropped here in the morning. So that was a one minute chart. This is a five minute chart. Rally back, it was still a short. Boom, got the drop. This one actually fell all the way tippy toe down. This was a late trade for me last week simply because yeah, I knew it was gonna go and I just stuck with it. I just stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. So you, and because I'd missed getting my exit in the morning because really was the exit in the morning was profitable if you, if you got out of it before the bounce. 
So you're shorting selling action here. You're shorting selling action here. You're, you're, you're getting into the move. This was the gap down. Again, this is a five minute chart. Well, let me just see if there's any questions. Um, I do give exact trades in the morning. I give the exact, exact entries. Like I did today in MRK. In fact, the trading room is online on YouTube and go listen to the live tape. Um, yes, these are trading stocks, not uh, options. Yes. Uh, oh, just really quickly, I'll address that because I'm getting a lot of questions about options here, but I don't want to get too off the mark. The difference is, it's, you know, there's pros and cons to options and equity trades. I, I don't want to make a whole big long talk about it. It's like another day. But the pros, okay, of doing options are that you don't need to worry about buying power and you don't have to put in as much money to open an account wherever you trade them at a broker. So that's the that's the bonus, okay? To me, the downside of doing options is you can't get in and out as quickly. And that's the downside to me. The bonus also in options, you can you could trade very expensive stocks that you would normally need a ridiculous amount of money to trade, like Amazon, which we all can trade using just an account, whatever the cost of the option is. You don't need to have to worry about buying power because the stock is over $1,100 a share or wherever it's at right now okay so those are the pros and cons of options pros and cons of day trading just a straight equity price the pros is that you can get in and out quickly you can maneuver yourself very quickly i can put in a stop i can get in i can get out i can take it and get right out and i love that about it because a lot of these moves happen fast and you can position your size and know you're going to get in and get pressed it with a limit order. You know, when you're getting an option, you kind of have to, you might have to maneuver it. You might have to throw the order out there, let it sit. It might fill your right of ways. It might not. You have to put it between the bid and the ask unless you want to pay the high price, which obviously nobody wants to do. So you have more maneuverability, I think, with the day trading. So that's the pros. The con, obviously, in day trading is you have to put up uh, money that's based on a margin for the stock price of the stock prices you want to trade, and it's all over a wide spectrum because it's the market. There's hundreds and thousands of stocks to look at every day. And most days I'm looking at different stuff. I never know. I don't know what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. I have, no, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you at all because I don't know what's gapping. It's not tomorrow morning. So those are the pros and benefits from those. Anyways, let's get back into it here. Footprints of institutional money is telling you we're gonna go this way. We are getting out of the stock or we are getting into this stock which is again, the hedge funds, the institutions, they're choosing to make decisions to buy stocks like for example, Amazon like last week or Google that gapped up and had a huge move Friday too, based on many, many other factors. I listened to the earnings call on Amazon because I talked about it on TV on Friday, I listened to it Thursday Night Live. You know, there's all these questions, they go over the report, they blew out their earnings estimates for the third quarter. Uh, they have you know huge estimates for fourth quarter, uh, huge expectations. We'll see if they make them come next year in the beginning of 2018. But the bottom line is that the people that are buying these stocks, like Amazon, for example, they've got billions of dollars. And the reasons they choose to go long a stock like that has nothing to do with anything that we would look at, okay? I'm, I'm strictly looking at the technicals, but I'm following what those people are doing. And those people are making decisions for all kinds of reasons. And the fundamentals really are one of them. Okay, but you don't have to spend the time looking at that stuff. First of all, it's absolutely impossible. You never have time to train. You, you never have time. You couldn't study all of the stuff that's out there. And not only that, you're not even privy to all the information. We do not have access to the same information as those people do. So get it through your head. We just don't. You can think you can you can listen to a call. You can think you can read everything in the world about a certain stock. There's research reports out there that we don't have access to that have real information that costs 300, 400, 500 grand. We're never going to know that information. We're not privy to it. So you read what's happening in the price. And that's how you know what's going on. Is the stock getting sold or bought? Now, here's another good one here, CMG. Stock gap down all the way back in June. It has fallen off a cliff. The stock up here, now this is a good option one. I've called a bunch of different options in this. It's just, there's one on right now, actually. If, if for the people that are still in it, 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 it was ready profitable last week. But anyways, this high over here in June was around 450. Look at this. The stock has lost almost half its value in June, July, August, September, in five months. So that's the power of an institution when it takes hold of something like it 
grips it by the throat. And in the case here of CMG, it's selling action. One, it's getting shorted now, and two, a lot of people that were long it sold it, okay? Stock has just kaboomed. So you would never be able to make money going long this stock right now. It is a short, and it's what I call falling off a cliff. Here's a bigger picture of this too. Um, let me just go back down here and see if I'm missing any clashes. Uh, I'm using the daily chart to make the chart decisions for the gap, but the one minute to take the trades. How do you tell if the gap will be filled the same day? If the gap rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system, which is what I teach in my class, I'm going in the direction of the gap. If it doesn't, I'm not doing it at all. So I'm not doing gap fills. They don't work. I don't want to get too off on a tangent about that. Unless we have time at the end, I'll talk about it. But gap fills don't work as a strategy to predict. It's not that things never do what people call fill a gap. It's not that they don't do that. In fact, in fact, UAA did that this morning. But, but I never in a million years would have gone along that stock. But you could say that fill the gap. But it's not something you can predict. You need to trade into the momentum you can predict. If you can't predict it, how are you, you going to make any money? It's a crap shoot. It's less than 50-50 odds then. And it certainly wouldn't risk $1,000 a day in something that's a crap shoot. You may as well just go to Atlantic City and have a good time. Okay? The bottom line is you need to be able to predict with a high level of certainty that something's going to go either up or down. Gap fills, you cannot make any predictions in them. In fact, UAA has earnings out tomorrow morning, I think, or tonight. In the next 24 hours, it reports. Who knows what that does? I will be watching it, though. But today, it gapped down, and there was no play in it. Um, all the moving averages, I, just, I use uh, 820, 50, and 200. I think I missed the question. Do I follow the 24-hour charts? I look at post and pre-market. I think I missed one in here. Yes, out, in and out the same day. Um, how do I tell if the gap would fill the same day? I think I answered that one. Of course, I've had a losing week in the last nine years. Of course, I have. I took me three years to figure out my system. Um, in the last year, I don't think I had a losing week at all in 2017. I don't think I did. I have the tracking for the year, winners and losers, on YouTube. You can go back and watch it. I haven't updated October's yet, but I'm, I'm going to. It's on my list of things to do. So, and, and here's the thing, and I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this, and then we're going to keep talking here. Um, if you do go, and this is just a good rule of thumb, I don't care what you do in the market. If you go five days, five days in a row, and you lose, you need to, to take a week off. In fact, if I ever feel like uh, that I'm slipping away, then I might take a day off after two days. But like, but like last week wasn't the case, um, but there was the one day last week. But, you know, if Wednesday, the following day, had been a losing day, which it wasn't, I might have taken off Thursday and Friday. When, when something isn't working that normally does, or you feel yourself slipping away, you need to pull yourself back. Because if you don't, that's exactly how people end up just making stupid, stupid, stupid mistakes. You know, maybe, maybe you're sick. Maybe things are working right at the market. Maybe, who knows? Okay, maybe you're not thinking right. Bottom line is, don't, if you ever go five losing days in a row, you should take the next week off. That's just, you know, it's just a good rule of thumb. All right, let's get back into here. Institutional money is what? It's a big money flowing in a certain direction. And you're looking for it, and you're predicting it. And you're predicting it before the market opens, before the stock opens. I do not get in the trade until after, though, it sets up on the live day. I'm never trading the pre-market or the post-market. But you've got to get it in the right direction. If you don't, it's going to be very hard for you to consistently make money. And one of the things I do as well is I focus on the time of the day. And I'm focusing on the open between 9.30 and 10. That's what I'm focusing on. So, for example, if a stock does not set up by 10 a.m., I'm not liking it. I'm not doing it. So that 30-minute period into the open is extremely, extremely important, okay? And again, the whole philosophy here, what I've been talking about all day, is to trade momentum to go with it. Now, here was a momentum play. It's funny because I went back and looked at this after the trading room today. And you can go in my YouTube video. I did a video Friday night or Saturday morning. I said the next target on Amazon is 1125. 
it got up today to almost 1123. So literally within two days, the stock went up, you know, to almost 1125, which is amazing. This close here on Thursday night was around 972. And just listen to what I'm saying here a second, people. This is momentum. The stock closed the night before at 972, whatever. It was close to 973, whatever it was. Open in the morning, 1058 or something like that, okay? That then on the day, I'm just talking Friday, ran up to 1105-ish. I think 1105 was the high on Friday. Actually, here, let's figure it out. I think it was 132, 1105 minus 972. Yeah, it was 132 and change. So the stock moved 132 points and change within 24 hours. That's institutional money. Buying the stock, that's momentum. It followed through today. And you know what? If this bar closes with a topping tail like this today, how much do you want to bet? Somebody out there, some trader out there will short this stock thinking it's made a top or a tail or a high or can't go any higher or something like that. Somebody in the world, some trader, well, if this, if this was a close today, which it's not, so I don't know where we're going to close. It's 1245 now. And I took this at 1136. If, if this stock closes like this today, someone will short this. Do you understand how insane that would be to do? And I don't care if the stock drops a little bit under the low from today, tomorrow morning. It doesn't matter. That is so dumb. That's not high odds. And it's not high odds of something to do on a consistent basis. The high odds trade is in high quality gaps with momentum, whether you're going long or short, in the direction of the gap. They have to rate per my 26 point rating system to do it, because not all ones are gonna work. But I'm telling you, the stock moved 132 points plus in 24 hours. This stock is not as short, and somebody will short this today if this stock closes like this. In fact, I'll look at it tonight after four and do a video and put it on YouTube. People don't do the right actions. They don't play with momentum. And it's no wonder then that people lose. And it's just no wonder. And it's no wonder why I win. You know, I'm looking for the momentum. Anyways, I called this, I called this on Friday morning. I said, buy, buy, the, buy the calls on Amazon for 1100. And I gave out a week. So it's still in play. I don't know if anybody's still in this, but the one guy did it. Here's an example of a reason to do an option. He bought one contract. He made 414 bucks. Just one, just one contract. And he got out on Friday. He probably is going to email me, wish he would have held it through today because it ran up. But, but I mean, again, it was a beautiful, beautiful day trade as an option trade, day trade. Oh, if you can afford to day trade the stock on Amazon, though, you could have done that too. Either way, are all gaps created with institutional money? No, no, they're not. In fact, UAA that rallied up today and filled that gap was not an institutional gap. That stock wasn't getting bought by institutions today. So you don't want to play that kind of thing. You want to play this kind of thing. This is how you're going to make 20 grand a month or 30 grand a month. This is how you're going to make a lot of money. Not doing stuff like UAA, not, not shorting this tonight if it makes a topping tail, thinking it can't go any higher, which by the way, it can. Whether it, whether it does tomorrow or not, I don't know. But I know it's a big week for earnings this week. Alibaba's out this week. Facebook's out this week. Apple's out this week. And I don't know what those stocks do in the gas, but a lot of big names in the tech sector report this week. So to short this even for one millisecond would be so dumb. Okay, you make money buying stocks that are moving higher with the momentum into the buying or set shorting stocks that are being sold off or shorted into the momentum down, but you can't do it in every one. So you gotta find the good ones. You gotta pick the good ones that are moved with institutional money. And I do it using a checklist. I do it every morning and that's how I figure it out. And let me just see if there's any questions here. I think I'm caught up. It's like I'm talking very fast now. Uh, anyways, the one thing I can say to people is, say your goal is to make a living trading. Just take your time with it. Learn, learn what to do, okay? The money will come. You know, one, one month, you might be really at the beginner level. And you might be profitable, but not making as much as you want. Because you can't risk as much as you want to make it. And you're still in the learning process or you have a small account. You'll get there. One month then, you might have a great month. You know, make five grand. And then you realize you got it down. And the next month, all of a sudden, you made 15. And that's how it happens. I mean, you, you know, you just because you stepped up your risk, because you know that you can, because you've proven to yourself that A, the system works, and B, you can do it. And again, being in the room with me, having the guidance and me calling the calls is definitely helpful. It's not necessary because you learn everything in my class to trade alone, but it's helpful. 
So I say learn the system first. The money will come. Go easy on yourself. So many people are impatient. The idea is to be profitable and green. Green, 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 green. It doesn't mean you're not going to have some days where you lose. Okay, like, like the one day last week. But, you know, the idea is that overall from October 1st to October 31st, you're showing a profit. All right, let's go over today's mark because I did talk about it. And, and I don't know if I would have done anything with this on Friday or not. It was just a very bullish day, but this fell off a cliff on Friday. Merck gap down on Friday, last week, and again today. So this was today's play. A lot of day traders would not have done this today. They would have thought that this was never going to continue lower. Guess what? I shorted it. This is what I do very well. I shorted the momentum in the stock. Stock closed last night here around whatever, or no, Friday night, I'm sorry. 58.25-ish, open in the morning here around 55.75-ish and dropped. And it did have a big move. So the first trade in Merck, you could have done it right here. I waited a teeny little bit and did it here, got the drop and out. So you see here, you could have, I mean, theoretically, you could have done an option in this, but it was just such much easier to do it as an equity trade. I don't think this is expensive. This is like a mid price point. I don't know where this is at right now, but you know, the momentum in this was down. So anyways, the entry, short it, 55.10. Stop, I like to put stops, okay? I ended up moving this up to 85, but the initial call was 55.80. Exit, boom, and it went a little bit more, 54.50. Again, I have to go back and look and see this is now, profit, 900 bucks. So your share size will vary, but your risk should remain the same most of the time that you're doing the trades. Let me just see if I have any more questions. Okay, I think I'm all caught up. Anyways, uh, the whole idea about trading is you gotta, you gotta have uh, a unique perspective. Your perspective is that you wanna be profitable, you wanna win, you're gonna take it seriously. You're gonna be very, very focused. I think you have to focus on not only the right strategy to do, but also the right time of day. I don't think it's a good idea to trade every day to four, unless you have something like the market power trending with you, an unusual trade like like the, uh, the one last week, the AMD, that fell pretty much into the close, and the CLG did too, but that's, those are rare that you get something going all day. For the most part, you know, most traders do trade all day, and I don't, I don't think it's a good idea, and I think it's part of the reason people lose. So you're better off sticking to one thing, and I do like to focus on shorts, but there are days like last week where you could have gone along a lot of things on Friday that were bullishly gapping out with the market. Either way, every trader needs an edge to be successful. For me, it's doing gaps, predicting them before they happen, and trusting and believing in that because I've done my system for so long now, I have a high level of conviction in what I do. Whether it's when I make the bullish calls or the shorts, uh, I really believe in what I do or say or I, or I couldn't do this, let alone run a trading room. So I'm focusing on one strategy, one time of the day, which I think is very critical to maximize the profits. And again, if your goal is to do this for a living, then you really do have to take it seriously. And the most important thing is learning it because once you get it down, all you have to do is step up your risk and then you're making more money. And the nice thing about training is you can do it from home. So I teach a course on my method. It's just a two day course at 16 hours. It's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, November 4th and 5th. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day on the one minute chart. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level where you will learn how to read institutional money, where the stock's gonna come in with the buying power or the selling power to short. You're looking to focus on the momentum. That's how you're gonna be profitable as a trader, not going against it, not even for any part of the day. Because again, even if you do it, even if you happen to do one trade against momentum and you make money doing it, it really screws up your brain and screws up your chart analysis and then you start to do these things like somebody said about the gap fields because they really don't work to predict. And that's not institutional money that moved the UAA up today. And you got to learn how to read that. Just like the Amazon. Just like that beautiful move in Amazon on, on, on Friday. Anyways, in my class, you will learn one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts, how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction, a more proficient advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps, and how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. And I'm not saying that 30 grand a month, you know, or, or 20 grand a month is wealthy, but I'm saying that consistently over the period of your life, uh, again, chunking it out year in year in year, you definitely can make a lot of money in the market. It's there. I mean, people are doing it. 
It's just for many reasons, some of which we touched on today, people are not able to do that. And it's really never about how much they're risking. The reason people lose is because they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they just don't. And you've got to really think, 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 and learn what to do first. You got to learn it first or the money is never going to come for you. And that's not to say that you can't make money doing bad trades. Of course you can. Anybody can, but you can't consistently. And, and if you want to rely on this for a job, then you better be consistent. So you'll learn also how to trade with momentum from me. Again, I said this earlier, it's about chunking it out and having conviction in what you do. So the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It is November 4th and 5th from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $4,999. If you want to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can email me for the forums. And if you'd like to sign up, I'm doing a 24-hour special for Halloween between now and tomorrow. If you sign up, you get one month free in the trading room and one month free in the options letter, like the Amazon call was from the options letter. That expires October 31st. Now, let me see. I think there's one more question here. TN, how do you find the stock that will gap? You can see gaps all the time. You can see gaps at night. You can see gaps in the morning. You can go and look at the list of earnings. Like I told you, Apple's reporting on Thursday night. Apple will gap. I don't know where it gaps until it gaps. Most stocks that have earnings reports gaps. Not everyone, but most. So you can print out all the earnings reports between now and the end of the year and the next week if you want on yahoofinance.com. You can find gaps in a million different places. Free websites online. You can get them on your platform. There's a top 20 list of stocks in the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, 20 ups and downs that are free. Um, on most people's platforms you can get. It's easy to find gaps. The, the, the thing is to find the ones that are going to move in your direction that you can predict that are going to be longs or shorts. Any other questions here? There's some good questions today, people. Try to, try to have a good, solid uh, earning season month. Uh, you know, again, the, it, you know, some people do my class and they come out of the class right away and they do extremely well. I, I don't know everybody that comes to me. I learn and get to know people as I, as I teach them and they're in the room and I talk to them on the phone. You know, you know yourself. You know yourself. Go easy on yourself if you're learning in the process. But I tell you, if you're losing in the market, stop leading money and think about what you're doing. You may be using a system that just doesn't work or maybe you don't have a good attitude. Uh, going back to what I said earlier at the beginning, though, you know, you've got to have the attitude that you want to win. It's something that is definitely a strength of mine. And so, you know, when you have a day where things are going well, you know, you can turn it around. And if you have a day where things are going great, you just take the money, like today, and you say, oh, thank you. Thank you for a great day today. Maybe it could have been a little bit bigger, but I'm happy with the money. You know, you kind of just, you got to go every day and take it as it comes. I'm sure one of the days this week is going to be a big one. I don't know when it'll be. I don't know when the big one will be this week. Every day, you don't know what you're going to trade. But you have to have a positive and optimistic attitude. You use your emotions to your benefit. I think that's also good in life. The trading room is $350 a month after you do the class. So no one can join the trading room unless they are a student of the course because you must learn what to do. Merck, for example, set up in the first five minutes of the day. If you didn't know how to do that trade, which you would have learned in the class, you would have never got it. Even though I call it in the room, they go set up too fast. Trading is something where you are risking money and you need to know how to do it. Plus, I really, I, I want serious people. You know, and, and if people come and they pay five grand, then they're going to learn something. My, my class is worth it. It's, it's five grand. It's good information. You're going to learn. You're going to learn how to trade gaps. You're going to learn how to trade gaps in a very unique way that no one else can teach you. It's worth it. And I only want people that are serious. That was a good business decision I made early on. And I've developed people into becoming good traders. In fact, I'll tell you this really quickly. <laughs> Jaguar Pa, who's in the room, called me on Friday night after he saw my spot on TV. 
He did Facebook Friday as an option and made 1400 bucks. He was ecstatic. He did it on his own. I didn't call the option trader. was at home all day on Friday. I only called the Amazon in the morning and he said, I've learned how to do this from you and, and I just wanna thank you. He called me to thank me as a student. So I forget when he did the class, but you know, he's, he's got it. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that happens, it's real. It's not without the realm of possibility for you to make money in the market, but you have to do everything right. And that's the other reason why I say don't trade from 9.30 to four. I can be perfect for 30 minutes a day. I can be, I can be, you can be too, but I can't be perfect from 9.30 to four every day, five days a week. Just like I can be perfect on TV for three minutes, four minutes, five. I can't be perfect probably on TV for eight hours a day. You, you know, you take some of the pressure and the weight off of yourself, okay? Don't ask so much of yourself. You don't need it in the market. It's the same thing with the trades during the week. You don't need every day to be a big one, okay? There were losses in the last month, and look at those numbers. Not every trade even has to be a winner, and you can make that kind of money. You've got to stick with the system and don't deviate. I think I answered all the questions. Let me just say. Listen, good group people. Happy Halloween. Have a great week. Watch me on Facts Business Thursday morning. Email me if you want to sign up for the class this weekend or the special. If you want to trial the trading room as well, you can email me. I can give you trial for the week too. Just email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to trial for the rest of the week Tuesday through Friday. Okie doke. Thanks, everybody.